Okay, hi everybody. I'm Plywood, and with me is No Good Citizen. How are you doing, sir? Hey, how's it going? How you doing, Plywood? Are you ready for some tactical uh, undead survival action? I'm ready to survive. I will survive with everyone in chat. Uh, this is Metal Gear Survive, the best and worst Metal Gear game released in the year 2018. We are going to be playing New Game Plus Bad Ending, because Bad Ending is actually the good ending. I know, it's counterintuitive. It's so. the same thought process as uh, Save the Frames, not the animals. <laughs> exactly. So. We are going to be starting here with a new game plus in three, two, one, go. Hey, let's go. Take it away. Thank you. So, as we said, this is Metal Gear Survive. This is the last Metal Gear game that has been released at the current time. We'll see if uh, anything else is coming down the pipe. Um, this is a survival-based game, so think... Basically, uh, think the Phantom Pain, Metal Gear Solid Five, but with survival elements and some revisions to the gameplay here and there. We're going to be playing with a female avatar. And my name is P. That stands for plywood. And PBs, because we're going to get one. A. A. The Peebs. The big Peebs. The big Peebs. There, there I am on the list. The P list. Also, uh, it's uh, my forced narrative that playing as a female avatar in this game is for good luck, because every time I played as a male av avatar, I have wiped terribly. There you go. Yeah, and thankfully you can actually set up ahead of time which gender you are by... Uh, there's like a load trick. If you like do this whole sequence and then exit out, you save a few seconds on loads, so I can actually set up uh, male or female there without losing time, which is nice. So yeah, the the loading in this game is pretty interesting. Uh, I know that both Plywood and I, I believe Plywood is also running this on an M2 solid state drive. Yes. Um, and even despite both of us running on, you know, one of the fastest available drives for consumers, that's reasonably priced. Uh, it still takes quite some time to load. That's right. So we just started with the opening. We're in detail. Uh, we're starving and thirsty. So we don't have a lot of running, but the big thing with this run is managing your stamina. Maybe you can go into that a little bit as I uh, maneuver here. Yeah, and uh, I'm not too sure how high the audio is right now because I currently can't hear his gameplay audio, but we run this game with Japanese dialogue on because it takes less time and gets you through a couple uh, discussions a bit more quickly. Uh, Plywood's being introduced to Good Luck right now, who is one of the um, main plot characters of the game. Who's also uh, voiced by the Japanese voice actor of Heihachi Mishima and uh, Bunta Fujiwara from Initial D and uh, Guile in Capcom vs. SNK2. Fun little fact there. That's why he's co-commentating with me, by the way. He has, he's got the facts on lock. So those Wanderers, we're gonna ignore them entirely. They're scary. Yeah, this opening stretch is a lot of um, stamina management. A, a huge part of this game is stamina management. You can look at the orange gauge that's next to Plywood's waist, uh, and right below it is the actual stamina meter. So his top gauge is health and bottom is stamina. And starting out, you know, you're you're underfed and uh, dehydrated and don't have a lot of running energy to use. So that's kind of troublesome when you're doing a segment that is almost purely dedicated to running. There's not too much combat here. We want to avoid it if we can help it. Uh, so that being said, there is a kind of little bit of tech here that you can use is when you're either not equipped with a weapon or if you're equipped with, say, like a sidearm, like a pistol or something, you can actually cancel your run without getting the extra animation frames by simply aiming your weapon and going into the ready stance. So it's kind of an integral part of doing this run. You'll see him do it quite a bit. So we're going to go ahead and get the big punch on uh, the our first encounter with the dust monsters. The wanderers, if you will. The dust bunnies. And, yes, the dust bunnies. And uh, that stun is going to be enough to keep him out of harm's way for a second. And that might look kind of simple to get that running sprint into the punch, but um, if you t miss time it a little bit, 
you'll get bit by the Wanderer, and it causes a pretty big time loss. Yeah, getting grabbed is really bad. Uh, one thing you probably noticed is I was readying the spear as I was climbing the stairs, and that uh, is a little bit faster than running up the stairs. Similarly, earlier on, I was diving upstairs rather than running up them. So, uh, just little things here and there. That spear is the only weapon I'm going to build throughout this whole run because we already have our layouts, our loadouts already set up. Um, not only will I have the best weapons and equipment I can possibly get um, at my current level, because there's like a level level cap to what you can use, so we're going to be using rare weapons, which are the blue ones. Um, so we're going to have the best weapons, and we're also going to have a bunch of food and water, and the food and water, or rather the grill, we're going to have grilled horse, <laughs> grilled horse, steamed horse, and uh, Anubis soup, which if you're a Zone of the Enders fan, you probably know all about the Anubis. It's actually a dog in this game. And all those uh, food items are going to give us some buffs for our stamina consumption, which is going to be pretty important since we're going to do a lot of running in this game. Right, and this game uh, mirrors, if people are familiar with Metal Gear Solid, Peace Walker, for example, or also the Phantom Pain. Uh, the item system in this game is very, very vast. Uh, it's, or you could actually compare it similarly to Monster Hunter, where, as Plywood mentioned, uh, he's going to have a lot of the best equipment and uh, a lot of the best uh, food stuff, so things of that general nature. Uh, there's a lot of crafting in this game. So, like, you know, you go on a color based rarity system. Um, blue is unfortunately the highest quality of equipment that you can use within, like, that's actually possible to be used within this run due to uh, the level that you max out at. And you cannot carry things like your rare and epic items over into an any percent uh, new game plus speed run, unfortunately. So we're stuck with blue. But he, the good news is that foodstuffs and uh, things like drinks aren't being limited in the same way. So at the very least, we have quality resources on, in, as far as that goes. And he'll be able to take advantage of the really substantial buffs that those give as he's going through the run. Yeah, so right here we are waiting through some tutorials, but lucky for me, I already have the things they want me to collect in my inventory, so I don't have to go over here. Uh, by the way, Japanese voice acting saves a couple seconds here on this tutorial, so that's why we use it. Also, it's a lot more pleasant to listen to. Right, and a big part about this opening stretch here, when you're finally getting established in base camp, is that there's quite a bit of tutorial windows that seem, they're not random, but uh, there are certain criteria that you do, like actions inside of the game that tend to trigger the tutorial windows. So even though it looks like Plywood is just quickly menuing through a lot of things and just kind of running from spot to spot, he's doing it in a specific order so that he can manage to keep the menus down to a minimum and therefore, you know, he's saving time. Yeah, we gotta, we want to do those menus right there as fast as possible so I can be right next to Virgil to uh, interact with the computer when I need to. So I get all my equipment set up, I do my initial buffs, get myself uh, to 100% thirst because thirst controls uh, how far you can run. So the less thirsty you are, the more you can run. And here we're going to do a warning shot. And this is going to lure enemies over. Hopefully I didn't screw that up. And Plywood and I have totally different strategies at that point. I, I actually don't use the warning shot, and I really should. Uh, you should. It's not, it's, it's not a good idea to faster. YOLO through there. Yeah, it's YOLO and you're going to wait. Uh, the thing is with these memory boards is you can't interact with them if enemies are aware of your, your presence, so... Right, and you can determine whether or not you're uh, being actively targeted by an enemy by using the threat ring, which is a something that is not new to Metal Gear Survive. It's been in a few Metal Gear games before. But if an enemy has you within their sight, uh, a giant orange caution sh sign will show up. And anytime that an orange caution sign is up, you can't interact with any sort of plot key item type deals. Yep. So uh, for the memory boards, we want to be as sneaky as possible, or basically 
the bare minimum of uh, stealth so we can pick them up as soon as possible. And for those wondering, yes, the cat is a cosmetic. The cat's name is Ricky. He's adorable. His tail swings along as I'm uh, moving around and aiming. It's very cute. Uh, He's has... a very important part of this run. Very important that you wear the cat head. There's a bunch of different awesome cosmetics. We'll show some of them off later. So one of the things that Plywood is doing here is that as he's picking up these memory boards, as you can see, it's checking things off on the objective list. When there's only one objective that's on the docket for him to take care of, he can immediately hit the menu button and select return to base, and the objective is still valid and it's been filled. This is something that is specific to New Game Plus. Uh, you can't do this in regular New Game. In New Game Plus, the game doesn't care, and you can just go straight back to base, and this saves so much time. It saves such a vast amount of time. It, 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 it hours. <laughs> it is no exaggeration. It saves a crazy amount of time. I'm gonna avoid these crowds here. Uh, try to weave through them. The crowd positions are random, so you kind of have to just go along with it. And then I'm gonna run over to this door, mash spacebar to open this door, lock as quickly as possible, and then walk. Very important that we walk to this, because if you run, they'll hear you, and then I won't be able to interact with this. And then we return to base camp. Boom. And y'all are about to see some new, some new tech, some new strats. We're gonna be able to skip a tutorial, which I yeah, before is, could not skip. This was recently developed as of about 24 to 48 hours ago. Is uh, actually what Plywood is going to do here is when he crafts when he crafts the wormhole extraction device and equips it, he's going to stall and keep buffering the air tank crafting until uh, until the iDroid gets done speaking, Virgil rather, excuse me. So uh, he's waiting for a specific talking point with Virgil and then he completes the crafting uh, process. And what this does is that this forces uh, an extra tutorial window instead of springing it on you randomly because the extra tutorial window, once it cycles on you in a normal setting, it warps you right back to base and wastes a bunch of time. Like this is a 20 second time save easily. Yep, so... Yeah, the game gets confused, like, in terms of the order of things, since we got both memory boards, so by waiting a little bit, you can actually skip the tutorial for the air tank, and that saves a nice chunk of time. Um, if we could skip more tutorials in this game, that would save even more time, but hey, I'll take what we can get. So, we are entering the dust. Uh, this stuff is toxic, you do not want to breathe this stuff in, that's why we need an oxygen tank. Uh, very important that we have that equipped throughout the run. Uh, our stamina is going to decrease rapidly while we're in the dust, so again, stamina management is going to be a key part of this run. Always want to be aiming to not go below 900. Uh, if you start running around at 900, your character will start like running really tired, and that's actually slower than just walking normally. So. Yeah, falling out of your... basically falling out of stamina too far causes your character to slow down exponentially. It, it adds a ridiculous amount of time, and for a game where you have to cover so much ground, taking multiple stamina hits like that is as about as undesirable as undesirable gets. Uh, that's why I mentioned earlier that managing your stamina is so important in this game, and the fact that you have two different intervals of speed, or variances, sorry, excuse me, uh, for when you're in the dust and when you're not in the dust, your stamina goes down at different rates compared to where you are. That's really important to keep an eye on. Yeah, and then uh, in the next mission we'll see yet another variable on top of it is uh, POWs, rescuing people. But we'll get there soon, folks. We'll get there soon. Uh, right yep. now we're going to the first transporter. Uh, this is going to be the first defense that we're going to do. Uh, securing this transporter because we don't want to have to run around uh, and we have these wormhole transporters that allow us to uh, fast travel across the map. We're not going to unlock them all, just the ones that we need to use and the most convenient to us. So as far as the memes go, this might be the one time that that the memers were correct is th this is the defense sequence this is what everybody talked about where it's basically an overglorified tower defense which uh, i don't entirely agree with 
Um, there's there's a lot of nuance to trying to set up defenses for transporters, and unfortunately, you're not going to get to see a whole lot of that nuance in a new game plus run. But in harder uh, difficulty settings and things like uh, the higher difficulty multiplayer uh, modes, uh, these become really, really hairy and frantic, and you have to put a lot of thought and foresight into where you're putting your defenses and how you're managing your resources. Uh, thankfully here at the moment, Plywood's using the exploding uh, arrows, and that does a lot for crowd control, but later he's going to be switching to uh, the standard heavy arrow, I believe, and that's going to play a huge part in resource management, because when you fire a regular heavy arrow, and as long as you don't miss your target, you can pick that arrow back up and reuse it again. So in a game where ammunition for regular standard guns becomes hard to find at times, and it's really important to make your, your bullets count, like your regular standard gun ammunition, recollecting your arrows for your bow is super important. Yep, we were using grenade arrows because they're very good in the first part of the game. Uh, these enemies are all super weak, so the guns just will one-shot them, but later on uh, our weapons aren't going to be quite as good. They're still going to be good, but not universally good all the time. I'm running up here to take out this crystal. Uh, we're collecting uh, experience in the form of Kuban energy, or Cuban en energy if you like the island of Cuba, um, but they s call it Kuban. Um, that's basically experience points. We will be leveling during this run. Uh, that's very important so we can keep up with the uh, level of the enemies and also so we can improve our dexterity, which improves our running speed, and our stamina, uh, which is the endurance stat, and that increases our total um, stamina. Both are really important because... Yeah, those, those are the only two stats that you level in the game. So, not too much longer here. I'm about to wrap things up. Uh, generally, these uh, transporter waves aren't any longer than two minutes, ever. But some of the later transporters, which you won't be seeing uh, in this run, because we simply don't need them, uh, that's not as important in the context of an any percent new game plus speed run. Some of these later transporters can get really, really hairy if you're unprepared. That's right. So... Right there, we return to base camp, which is something I didn't realize that you could do with some of them, but that one uh, you found, which I was really appreciative of, um, that you could just return to base camp rather than interacting with the transporter. Right. So uh, this chapter, we're going to be rescuing our first POW, our first survivor, Miranda, uh, who is a nurse that crash-landed into this alternate dimension called Dite uh, from a helicopter because Metal Gear Survive is pretty funky like that. Um, we're going to be doing a warning shot strat yet again, uh, and that's going to bait enemies off to the side as we rescue Miranda, uh, which is nice because uh, there's going to be a huge crowd of enemies that we do not want to deal with. Yeah, and on top of that, carrying a POW also contributes to your stamina drain. So anytime that you're carrying any sort of POW, you're going to burn through your stamina more quickly. So if you're dealing with a large crowd and you're also trying to carry a, a POW as well, it's a great opportunity to make things complicated for absolutely no reason besides just making the game harder on yourself. So warning shots are definitely a good thing to have here. Yeah, and I'm going to be dropping Miranda off in the shadow over here. That's because carrying a POW in the dust is super stamina intensive, so it's faster just to leave her behind. Uh, she's gonna take a couple of hits, but she's fine, folks. She's fine. Don't it, ignore the pleas for help. She'll be fine. M Miranda's a tough lady. She'll she'll sort she, it out. She she she's got it down. There's a guy later on that is not as tough as Miranda, so and he's gonna potentially cause us problems. Hopefully not, but he can. And this right here is why the uh, exploding arrows are so good. Yes, th this is a very great place to have them. I actually only got them recently. That's another thing that uh, I think a lot of people don't give this run credit for, is that survive as a run as a concept is not 
too particularly complicated, but the amount of preparation that goes into this run, especially considering that this game follows a model very similar to Monster Hunter, where it's trying to encourage more replay value and more time spent playing the game because of like farming equipment and things of that general nature, because a lot of good equipment is a random drop and usually in co-op. So that means that you would have to find at least one other friend to get a chance to get better gear. And that's totally not even considering the, the prospect of the fact that you have to uh, constantly farm resources to keep things like your ammun ammunition and food up. So um, it's good that he has these exploding arrows here. Let's put it that way. That's right. So we've rescued our first POW, first survivor. Uh, now we can manage our crew, which we do have to do nominally we don't actually have to manage our base that much during this run we just have to do the bare minimum to move on uh it's okay if they starve or thirst it's <laughs> us we have to make sure we don't starve and for thirst. so the save is only sticking around for about another hour and 40 minutes so that's right so we're gonna do our first level up here we're gonna get to if we can level six if we got enough experience or level five it doesn't really matter Five We're is the optimal. Gonna get... no, 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 you want to get as if you can get to six, that's that's good. Just because then you're dealing with uh like a level eleven enemy is not going to become a red skull guy. But right. Um. So we do. I'm sorry, maybe I should have said five is like the minimum. Yeah, you want five, and you should get five. Exactly. So, but the, this game is not particularly, this game has the similar staff management system to the Phantom Pain and um, Peace Walker, but it's not quite nearly as intensive. And um, a lot of the design choices that are made with it kind of don't matter. And especially in the scheme of an, a new game plus any percent, they don't matter. Yeah. Uh, so like <laughs> Plywood said, he's just going to drag them, drop them, and then be on his way. If they starve, they starve. Yeah, they won't actually die, they'll just perform really poorly. So they, these are the ruins. First ruins, ruins one. Oh, we're gonna do a back door here with the fence and climb this ATV. And this is going to cut out a huge chunk of the ruins. This is one of my favorite tricks, honestly. Like, that, I, I knew that I was part, at least partially invested in learning this run once I realized that there would be cheeky little exploits like this. Don't blow me up. Oh, no. Oh, gosh, that one enemy way off in the distance. Eventually so that's what we were talking more. about earlier, where if your threat ring is active and an enemy senses you nearby, you'll just lose time just waiting for them to lose interest in you. A lot of the, t a lot of the time, they won't even engage you, but it still costs you in the grand scheme of things because you can't, you know, go right back to base. Yep, gotta wait for the enemy to lose interest. So that's the ruins one. Um, well played regardless. Yep, we got through it. Um, took some damage, but that's okay. And for those wondering about the cosmetics, uh, so the in-game currency in this game is called Survive Coins, because they are very creative. Uh, you get those daily, like you can get those from a daily drop. You don't actually have to spend any money to get any of the cosmetic stuff. Um, I did spend money to get a character slot so I can actually do New Game Plus runs, um, which was like 10 bucks. It, but, it's, the, the, but the, the reality of that is, is that you really don't need the extra character slot if you don't plan on speedrunning this game. No. Um, it, it's you can actually play through all of this game and never spend a dime on extra content as, as long as you just claim your daily login bonus there's genuinely there's a fair bit of cosmetic like cool stuff that you know costs real money or you can use your login bonus but there's a limit to how much content there really is to extra stuff to get in this game so you could just log in every day for a month and be looking pretty good that's right so we are going to pick up the Digger, uh, which is our best friend and worst enemy in this run. Yes, and it's, it's a recurring character. <laughs> yes, the recurring character of uh, Tower Defense. So, once again, dealing with a crowd here, and I try to avoid getting smacked. Getting smacked is very bad, just try to weave as much as I can. Uh, you'll see as well that 
I will ready my weapon after I uh, before I do certain actions, and that's because if you're in the walk mode rather than the run mode, you can recover stamina, and we want to keep our stamina as high as possible throughout this, uh, and try to have just enough to do what we need to do, so you'll see me ready my weapon at various points uh, to do that. I think that's one of the more interesting parts of this run is because, you know, people like to call runs like these uh, nature walks, but this is kind of a much more hands-on nature walk. Like, you have to, you can't just mash your way through it. You have to actually be paying attention to what's going on with your character at all times. Yeah, that's where the, the big difference between, like, um, the Phantom Pain or Ground Zero run, where there is no stamina meter, uh, you just you run at full speed. You're, you're big boss, you can sprint forever. You just go forever. Uh, not so in this game, and it's good in a sense. I mean, it makes the run more complicated, but there's some uh, some meat on those bones, something to do while you're uh, running from point yep. A to point B. Yeah, it's it's a lot more hands-on than just getting from point A to point B. You, you, you have to just constantly be in the seat and making sure that you're not wearing yourself out. And a lot of that has contributed to, as Plywood mentioned at the beginning of the run, uh, having higher end food and drink. Because higher end food and drink do things like uh, increase your, your, your stamina regeneration rate, uh, and they affect directly how quickly your stamina goes down, uh, things like that. So you're basically gonna see Plywood always consuming soups of some sort to stay fully fed, fully hydrated, and fully buffed. That's right. Um, you know, during these defense sequences, I don't need to really worry about buffs, um, but at the very ends of these sequences, you'll see me buff myself, just to try to get as much out of the buff as possible for whatever's coming up next. Yep, it's a, we call it the, the, the pre-big run, uh, c consumption. <laughs> it's kind of a, it's kind of a required thing. Because it's the flow of this game is generally whenever you get to a dig like this, there's going to be a lot of running afterwards. Um, or at least in the context of uh, New Game Plus any percent. So it basically goes dig, run, dig, run, dig, run. And in between the dig and the run, you're going to want to make sure that, you know, your soups are on deck and that your run speed is at the maximum possible you're making me hungry. You're like, we got to get that soup on deck. We got to. But the thing is, the captain. She shoves food down her throat so fast. It's like, here's some grilled horse. Here's some steamed horse. Here's some dog soup. Boom, boom, boom. All right, I'm good to go. What do you think the captain's calorie count is by the end of <laughs> the end of the run? It's got to be like somewhere in like the 15, 20,000 range. <laughs> she she's, like, she's not eating. She's not eating cheap food. Like that's not cheap. It's uh, who just casually eats a quine. Uh, survivors still clearly you gotta have the will to survive and the best way is to <laughs> eat steamed horse uh, another thing that plywood is doing here you might notice is that he's going around blowing up structures this is because later on in the game there's a plot point where you have to expand the base's reach uh, basically the perimeter of how far out the perimeter of the base is so before you can do the actual expansion process, you have to manually go into the base editor and destroy all the rubble. So if he starts doing a little bit of that now early on in the game, that's less rubble that he has to take away during the expansion process, which saves him a lot of time. Yep. Uh, so just a little bit of housekeeping that we need to do at our base just so we can save some time later on, uh, which makes this uh, dig somewhat interesting since we have to uh, make sure we delete everything we need to delete. Uh, I think I need to destroy some stuff in the southern portion. Just need to reload here. And there's a very particular way we reload because <laughs> if you reload you want, do, do, do the you want me to talk way, about this way? Yeah, you should, should explain I why one? you gotta reload the right way. Alright, so when I was learning this game, because Plywood has played this for a much longer time than I have, uh, when I was learning this game, I kept running into this weird glitch after the first base dig, where I would go through the teleporter, 
and the teleporter would take me back to the dust, uh, which is fine, and that's no big deal because that's where I wanted to go. And then I would just suffocate to death and die immediately for no reason, and it looked like invisible things were just killing me. Like my character was just flailing wildly, and then I would just choke to death, and that would be the end of my run. As you can see, we're already almost 30 minutes into the run, and that is a very tilting thing to experience on multiple attempts. Uh, until we both put two and two together and realized that if you go to your um, your inventory database uh, at the base camp, before I was trying to do uh, the edit loadout option and apply my loadout every however many levels, like when you would do a, a level up interval, because it would update your gear to what you can currently hold at that level. So if you do that during these base digs or at other random points in the game, instead of just going to uh, change equipment and because I play on pad, that would be clicking L3 to restore all of your ammunition. If you try to equip a loadout instead of just doing the restore ammunition strategy, the game unequips your air tank. And then when you go to the dust without an air tank, you suffocate <laughs> you to suffocate death because to you death. can't breathe. It is actually impossible to unequip the air tank in this game. It is not an option. So this is a bug that we found out the hard way. Yeah, and the other thing is, if you try to reload your stuff through, uh, if you do your initial uh, menuing out of order, food can disappear from your inventory, so it's very important that you equip your loadout and then uh, get all of your food, because I have done it the other way around, and then I would lose food for no reason, like it would just disappear from your inventory, it's like, I didn't eat that. But it's just gone. So there's something really screwy with how the the game handles uh, <laughs> the freaking loadout system. This is stuff that genuinely can kill your run. And when you're doing a run of a two-hour game, it's it's not what you want to happen, obviously. Um, but there's there's a couple weird phenomenons in this game that hopefully we won't see any of, because Plywood is a much better runner at this game than I am. But um, yeah, the, the air tank glitch, I have to say, is probably my most hated one. We cleared out all the enemies, I cleared out all the... Oh, actually, there's like one bit of rubble over there. I think you cleared out quite a bit. Cleared out most of it. But I forgot this one in the corner. That's okay, though. I should have honestly just ate instead. <laughs> Someone now, now got that, that out of the way. Now that the dig is finished, uh, we will actually be leaving from base camp and we will instead be going to do, you guessed it, another dig. So as you can see, Plywood is loading up the soups once more, getting the captain all nice and fit and ready to go. We're going to go run another marathon. Yep, and uh, this is our first uh, outside of base dig. And one thing I want to mention as we're doing this line, um, you got to be very careful about your visual cues in this game because of how thick this dust is. It's, it's basically like the fog from Silent Hill. It's really easy to get lost out here, um, and the landmarks are sometimes pretty uh, generic, like, oh, there's that tree, or that rock, that box, stuff like that. So. And it's also not like the Phantom Pain where you can just open your eye droid and look at where you are. Whenever you're in the dust, nine times out of ten, the map will actually not show you your location on the map because it doesn't work that way. Yeah, you have to go... Like, you're supposed to be a cartographer and figure out the lay of the land, so... Like, when you're coming out here for the first time, you're supposed to, like, explore, like, okay, there's this stuff, that stuff, and then you have your map unlocked. So but as you can see, Plywood's got this memorized pretty well. He's already at the village and getting ready to do our first out of base dig. That's right. Actually, uh, came up with this line tonight because I was like, I think I can make That's this line, line better. Yeah, it, it is a good line because uh, avoids. I, I used to keep on going the wrong way and like go off course, but pretty much just run straight out uh, from the transporter. Right. So as you can see, Plywood switched to heavy arrows now. Um, when you're doing digs that are this long, this dig takes about 10 minutes. It's in three waves. Uh, when you're doing digs this long, your ammo capacity for your bow is a little bit limited. Uh, so exploding arrows are not economically viable. 
Arrows that you can shoot and then reuse are a much better solution. Even though they do less damage, you're guaranteed that as long as you don't lose them and don't miss them, you can keep picking them up over and over and over. Yeah, we're now really getting into the uh, meat and potatoes, or I guess the horse meat and uh, dog soup of hey. playing, <laughs> playing this game. So hey. now these guys all seem like schmucks, like I'm hitting them in the head and that's a weak point. You can hit them in the back, that's also a weak point. But just because these, these enemies seem really dumb, uh, if you let them hit you, they will kill you. Even though I have like great gear, uh, you can get stun locked and die very quickly in this game. Uh, which if you ever play this game casually, you'll learn the hard way and get killed. Uh, because you got smacked like four times by two wanderers. And then can I use the, can I use this meme? It's the Dark Souls of Metal Gear. There you go. It's the Dark Souls <laughs> of Metal, Metal Gear. It, but what he says is true too. Is that even when it's a weak wanderer? Uh, wanderers are particularly dangerous in groups uh, because if they all dogpile on you, you'll just get locked and hit stun and you will probably die. Yeah, uh, being in a crowd is the worst place to be. If you're surrounded on all sides, uh, you are, you really gotta like somehow disperse the crowd, whether by diving or using a weapon that clears the area. Uh, while we're waiting between these waves, I'm going to be destroying these crystals and getting some XP. Getting uh, that shmoney. Yeah, just get a little bit more shmoney, a little bit more uh, honey in the pot uh, for later. Uh, the XP grind in this game for new game really isn't that bad. Like, it's not that... it's not a big concern. We just want to make sure that we kill enough enemies and... Um, kill enemies and since we get the experience by default when they die during digs you get a lot a lot and everything kind of just works out just enough to get to level 20 which is level we want to be by the end of this run yeah that's right and the best part about that is, is that you really just don't you don't have to go out of your way anything that you do to get experience in this uh, new game plus run is it's already there you're already there doing something so you like you might as well otherwise you would just be kind of sitting there watching the game go by which we might do a little bit of you know have a little bit of fun but um oh uh you might have just noticed that i deleted some stuff from my inventory that was stuff that i picked up uh during this dig that i don't want to bring back because you'll get notifications like uh, at the end of the dig, like, hey, you, you got this side, you know, you got these resources, uh, good for you, but uh, I don't, I do my resource collecting outside of the speed run, um, not during the speed run, because that'll slow you down uh, in between chapters. Yes, that's something worth mentioning, is that this game uh, runs on a uh konami server uh is not only just client side but also a lot of your resources and gameplay information are saved on the konami server so when you have a steam account or for example a psn account what have you xbox pick one um every character that you have is linked together uh so if you earn resources on one character you can see those resources on your other character Yep, and that's why New Game Plus works as well as it does for the speedrun, because all the source resources are linked. So there's no need to actually grind or farm, sorry, farm, I guess I should say. There's no reason to farm on New Game Plus. You should be doing all your farming on your main character, which is what we do. Yep, me and no good. We sit back, drink a couple of beers, and, uh, watch the turrets do all the work yeah it's, good, it's good the, time. the multiplayer gets a, a, a lot of crap for being what it is because multiplayer is pretty wave centric in terms of you know exploiting the uh the defensive cycle that you see here it's basically just this but with friends which is actually really really fun um but uh it's pretty chill when you have people that have a good idea of how the flow of multiplayer is supposed to go, it's it makes farming really, really easy. It makes farming really easy, and no one has to work particularly hard. 
uh, as long unless as you're on extreme, <laughs> that you yeah, can't unless you're on extreme. Super day guard. <laughs> yeah, it, when you, when you're on extreme, it's all hands on deck, and you have to play like you mean it. But if you're just playing and you know doing hard difficulty um, or very hard, and it's it's totally fine. Like it's it's all just money in the bank, just collect and just getting ready for that next NG plus run. Yeah, the the unfortunate thing and one of my biggest criticisms of this game is you can't do the single player co-op which would have made the value of this game so much higher in my mind because uh i'll be honest with you folks there's a lot of metal gear speedrunners out there we get we got our own community but there's not a lot of people that run this game but if you could do single player campaign in a co-op setting i can assure you more people would be running this game just because you know it's chill laid back goofy fun and that's why that's why we like it is that you know for me personally i enjoy the gameplay cycle of the fox engine i really liked mgs5 a lot as a long long time metal gear fan i think that mgs5 was some of metal gear's best gameplay so to be able to just you know do fox engine with friends that's i could do that forever honestly i'm not even kidding it's it's enjoyable to me yeah the other thing is is that um I haven't really gone into it too deeply, but there are some quality of life changes that this game gives to the Fox Engine Metal Gear gameplay. Uh, everything feels very snappy in this game. Everything feels pretty responsive when it comes to the combat. And bow and arrows and melee weapons are a lot of fun. Now you won't really be seeing me use melee weapons in this run because they're super dangerous to use in this context. Um, like... You don't really want to get up and close on these enemies. It's, it's very dangerous. <laughs> Which is, it, it's really kind of a shame because there's a lot of things that are really cool about this game that you won't get to see in an NG Plus speed run because they're simply just not accessible. Like, um, like if you're a big fan of melee weapons, you can actually pursue the, the melee weapon skill tree. Um, I do believe I'm using a, uh, I think I'm using a one-handed melee weapon on my main character right now but uh you can do things like you can jump off a high surface and do like a ride and front flip into a big like super huge 360 swipe slash like things like that that are just really cool nice little touches that don't feel like they've been forced in and uh unfortunately those are things that you don't get to see until you spend some time with the game instead we get to hang out with ricky the cat which is a good consolation prize Ricky is pretty sick. I'm not even gonna lie. You're great, Ricky. You're great. Yeah, that is that is a nice cat. You you have a cat yourself, isn't that right? I, I do. I do have a cat. And also on top of that, when uh, the Phantom Pain was popular, and people were still playing the Metal Gear Online component for that, I also wore Ricky. Oh, nice. I didn't know Ricky was also in Phantom Pain. Oh, get off Ricky. me! Oh no. Oosh. Oh no, oh no. Are we are we safe? <laughs> We're fine. Okay, let's make sure no injuries. You guys are getting Yeah, R Ricky is also in MGO. These fools need to maintain their social distancing. That's all I'm gonna say. So, yeah, the, the wanderers do not understand the concept of social distancing. So that will probably not be the last time that happens during this run. But as long as it doesn't result in an actual injury, we'll be okay. Injuries in this game are very similar to Snake Eater, where it, getting one in the wrong place can really... Yep, there, see, as I mentioned before, it's... There we go with the uh, not social distancing. But uh, injuries in this game are very similar to Snake Eater, where getting one uh, in a bad place can significantly hamper your ability to do well with your character. And in a game where you need to run fast and have your thing, your stats regenerate quickly, Injuries uh, go completely contrary to that. And so that's, that's the, the end of the first out of dig. Yeah, we did it. Um, we are now going to be rescuing uh, a child named Chris. But before we do that, we're going to level up to at least level 10. So we can get some more stats. Uh, especially because this portion of the run uh, is one of the most tricky and one of the areas where you're most likely to die uh, due to various things as we will go along. These next few chapters are pretty scary uh, all in their own ways. So 
I would like to point out one thing is when uh, plywood is in the, sc the skill tree, that is actually not the complete skill tree that you get to see. Uh, the, the actual fully blown skill tree for survive is quite larger, but you don't get to see that until you have beaten the initial game. Yeah, which is super lame. Like, I really wish you could, like, start customizing before post-game. There's a lot of stuff that's only behind post-game, which I just don't really understand. Like, extra bosses and stuff. We'll, we'll get into the, into some of these things, but let's talk about the Jeep oh, and the right. Lord of this Dust. Thing. Oh my gosh, what is that? Oh, thing? did he spawn? Oh yep. no. <laughs> nice. All right, so Plywood is taking the only Jeep <laughs> in the game. He's saying on a very, very, oh no, the roll. <laughs> oh no. Uh, Plywood is going to attempt to not destroy the only Jeep in the game, taking a very, very specific route that is going to take us to our next point of interest so that we can cover what is probably the longest distance that needs to be covered in this game during this run. Um, as I mentioned before, this is the only Jeep spawn in the game for some reason or another. And in Dite, in the dust, uh, vehicles deteriorate more quickly than they should because they're being constantly eroded. So this line has to be basically perfect every single time or you're walking. Yep. So when he disembarks, he's going to be picking up the walker gear. As you can see, we have kind of like a little road map mapped out and planned so that when one vehicle dies, it is time to take over for another. So he's going to continue on his journey and head in the direction of Chris and hopefully um, won't be hoofing it. Yeah, just to be clear, you don't buy subclasses. People have a lot of misconceptions about this game. Uh, like, it's just like you have to buy everything with in-game currency. It really it, isn't the you case. You can play through 100% of this game without spending a dime. Yeah, and it's not like a... I don't, it's not like a pay to win kind of thing. Yeah, it's so. and it's not like a, a you pay with your time. Like it, it's really the the grind is not terrible at all. And this is coming from someone that plays Street Fighter Five and used to grind for free characters. Uh, it's it's nowhere near as bad. The a lot of that stuff is extremely exaggerated. You can access everything in this game without paying extra. Except another character slot, which is lame. Here's Chris. Yeah, except for the character slot, which doesn't matter unless you're speed running the game. And at that point, if you're that invested, $10 probably doesn't matter that much to you. Very nice drop. We want to make nice. sure we don't break our legs and climb that rock. Certain surfaces in this game, uh, we can't, like, climb a ledge while we're carrying a POW. So, uh, we take some alternate routes and uh, exploit the geometry and climb things that you're not really supposed to climb. But if you know the the right spots, you can take better lines. Uh, it's really nice. We call it, we call it Skyrimming. <laughs> I just made that up just now. <laughs> I, I call it surviving, honestly. <laughs> Just so survivor. now Plywood is going to do another quick defense to activate a transporter. This one's pretty short, and having this uh, heavy machine gun here kind of makes it a walk in the park. There aren't really any super aggressive enemies to worry about here. It's just the Watchers and the Wanderers, and they're all slow. So you basically just have to have a pulse to get through this part. Yeah, we don't have to use any resources, which is really nice. Um, oh, we should mention the Lord of Dust. What what the heck we just saw? That's the primary antagonist of this game, um, and all the enemies in this game were designed uh, by a gentleman named Sato, last name Sato, and he helped actually with the uh, enemy creature designs in the Silent Hill series. Uh, and by far, the, I think the best design in this game is the Lord of Dust. It's this big hulking, massive. All-consuming, all-consuming nano machine pile. Uh, <laughs> you think I'm kidding, but I'm not. My wife, my wife still says that she wants a Lord of the Dust plushie. I would love a, I would love to see like a Lord of Dust figurine. It would be huge. <laughs> Just be yeah, this long I, terrain. I think, I definitely think that since, because you know this isn't considered to be quote real Metal Gear. It's kind of cool that there are some things that they got away with like uh, Big Mouth, no spoilers, um, but there are a lot of things that they got to get away with because, you know, they're not being held down by the constraints and expectations of the main series. So, the Lore of the Dust is definitely one of those things. 
where um, he randomly appears, usually at the worst times possible, for example, during the middle of a speed run. Uh, and he is a giant obstruction that basically destroys everything in his path. Yeah, um, we do not want to get stepped on by the Lord of Dust. He will kill us. I just got... <laughs> Just got my that, daily that, bonus. No, I hate that so much. That happened to me during a D rust run once. Oh, that's so. Frustrating. I was like, why did I, why did I stop? I didn't stop. I didn't tell you to stop, Gabe. I want you to go. And it, I'm like, oh, this is why you do not run it at three in the morning, I guess, because <laughs> that that could happen. Oh man. So yeah, right there we got some survival coins. Whoop yeah, whoop. that's hey, yeah. Hey, you're, you're getting shmoney at the cost I'm of your time. <laughs> This run just got a little bit worse, but my resources just became a little bit better. Anyways, hey, uh, hey. <laughs> so we're uh, running over to Ruins 2. Um, we have to pick up some wheelchair parts because Chris cannot use his legs. Um, and we are also going to get another memory board. But uh, we have to deal with the infamous spider pit. Uh, <laughs> and uh, when I say pit and spider, I really mean both. It's a uh, pit full we'll of spiders. Him, we'll let him find out. We'll let him find out. It's, uh, the, the spider, the spider pit is infam infamously the part where my wife just holds her breath the entire time that I'm doing it. Because it's, even though the movement in the Fox engine is really good, um, it's very momentum based. Get so if you're, oh no. <laughs> You say by the cutscene. I think I did. <laughs> well, not really, but uh, the, but Fox Engine is really momentum based when you're sprinting. So if you're not completely precise, there's a chance for this next segment to go wrong. Plywood is going to take a very specific line while doing a bunch of uh, parkour. Otherwise, he's going to get mauled to death by a giant crowd of spiders and he's safely through. No big deal. No falling in. No muss. No fuss. But that is also a run killer. That can cost you a lot of time if you miss or get held up by the spiders because there's about, I'd say, 60 of them in there, give or take, it's and they ridiculous. will just hit stun you to death. There's so many spiders. And they will poison so, you. That's the next memory board, and we are home free on that one. Nothing to worry about on his end. Uh, why is it on the torch? Wait, did it remember from my previous character because I was selecting the torch before? Dang. Oh, that's weird. That's So fun. the next objective is to build the exploration team ready room. This is pretty simple stuff. Just running to the base builder and dropping down a tile real quick. And after that, we are going to go pick up our next POW. And this is arguably the scariest POW. Not, not him specifically. He's comic relief. He's the cook, and he cooks up some... Uh, well, you'll see what he what he says later on. It's it's pretty amusing, but um, <laughs> we have a lot of running to do here. This is the longest stretch of running in the whole game, and that's one thing. But the other thing is where Nicholas is is pretty much the most dangerous spot in the entire game, and not just because of the amount of enemies there, but also because there is a risk of crashing if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, mm -hmm. which we'll uh, get into. I know it's it's a bit of a rough spot. It's it, it's like a raw wound. Uh, oh, <laughs> it's my mostly friend here. It, it's it's mostly healed now. I promise. Okay. Uh, but like Plywood said, this is the longest stretch of ground to cross in the game. Uh, and as you can see, you can't see anything. Um, and as we mentioned before, your map's not an option, so you have no choice but to use vague visual references to make sure that you're getting the optimal line to get where you're going. So this is why having your soup ready is important. Memorizing is very important uh, because you can lose a lot of time here just being slightly off. And that being said, your ultimate destination is also a huge risk in a hazard area. So you want to get everything correct because if you don't get things correct at this point, it can cost you it. I would scrape the run. But me personally, I'm a reset king. I, I would scrape the run um, because you can stand to lose anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes here if you're not careful. Hey, uh, don't let anyone know about those magazines, okay? They're my uh, speed run routing <laughs> magazines. So they're very private, very private. <laughs> 
Oh, he's he's one of my favorite characters. He's I think. he's the best, and the Japanese voice actor is uh, actually really good. Uh, right Super here, we are going to be uh, using a fun little shortcut with a fence. So go over here, drop a fence, climb over this rock, and this is going to let us uh, skip going around this area and go straight to Nick. And now is one of my least favorite parts of this a whole entire run. I uh, I hope this goes well. So one thing that I don't think that Kojima Productions accounted for uh, when creating the Fox engine was that eventually it would not be them working with it anymore. So there's a lot going on in this area. As you can see, it's raining, it's muddy, there's a lot of reflections, there's a giant fog wall, and there's a lot of wanderers. So this is the hardest, this is the hardest teleporter defense sequence in the game uh, because as soon as he drops Nick and activates the teleporter, uh, these wanderers are going to go wild. So he's going to want to go fence up as quickly as possible. The tech before used to be to throw grenades to keep these wanderers away from you and to keep them from going absolutely completely wild. But we found out for sure that if you throw a grenade into a crowd of too many wanderers, it causes the game to do what seems to be like a stack overflow. And the game will just flat out crash because there are too many things dying on screen. This happened to me during the middle of the relay race run last weekend and effectively killed my run. Uh, so Plywood is going to use a turret here instead because even though the crowd control isn't nearly quite as good, it's not going to stress the game out to a point where the game just full on crashes and it's unrecoverable. Because as this game runs on a checkpoint system and not actual individual save game, uh, he would be set back quite a bit if he failed here. So this is really important. He's actually he's cutting it. Through. All right, that was oh, terrible. No. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh, I'm so sorry. That's. I was a. Uh, I shouldn't. Okay, so the reason why that failed, I positioned my uh gun poorly. Realize nearby one. I'm sorry, I didn't mean the commentator's curse. No, you. that that was on me because I positioned the turret in a different spot that I did not test, so that caused a problem. Can I actually, uh, so I guess, what am I going to do? Uh, I guess you would have I to RTB go... and then it, You would have to RTB and then run back. <sighs> I don't or know could you I... just, it, it, you could always run back to the other teleporter, but man, that's, that's a ways away. It is a ways away. All right, folks, you guys ready for some on the fly routing? This is definitely some make it up as you go. Uh, a lot of my <laughs> uh, a, a lot of my community that's watched me stream this game definitely knows that this is a bad place to have unexpected incidents happen. So what happens here will be very interesting and an undoubtedly a testament to Pywood's ability to make this game work for him. <laughs> that's right. Um... Yeah, so either I'm going to be running all the way back, which I don't want to do, or I'm going to go to... There's another transporter that I can uh, take Nick to, but, well, you know, lesson learned. I'm going to put the turret it's because not... It's because I'm here, I'm sorry. No, it's not because you're here. <laughs> I decided to put the turret in a completely different spot, which I should not have done. should have put it in I... the same spot as before and just put down the two fences. I actually did something similar once where uh, I, I put it close to my usual spot, but I put it like right inside of the like the bracket line of the teleporter and I couldn't hit like half of the zombies because they were like the, the teleporter was right in my field of vision. So they just mauled me alive and I was like, OK, I guess I'll, I'll just die. Classic. There's a lot of nuance to running this game, and then there's even more nuance to running this game well. It is not simply just running through from one point to another, and there's a lot of uh, breakage points. So um, Such a, chance this to, one. a chance to crash is also just a bonus. All right, we're heading to the other transporter, which we can locate from the light. Follow the light. That is one consistent thing in this game that you can find, um, even if your map doesn't work, if you're not in an area where your map b is behaving properly, you can always use the uh, the big light antennas, I guess you could call them. Uh, the antennas that have those big shining light strobes on them to tell. It's kind of like a guiding light home. 
in a sense. All right, so this is a non-standard transporter, but you know what? We're we are here. definitely making it up as we go now. You know, I... The good news is that even though we experienced a bit of time lost there, uh, the transporter will be up soon and uh, there won't be a massive angry dog pile of wanderers on top of it. All right. We have uh, successfully done the thing that I was trying to do. I mean, at least Nick didn't die. <laughs> That's the worst. <laughs> That is actually, that is that is somehow worse. Somehow that is worse. It, I, if you thought that it couldn't get worse, it actually can get worse. Is that instead of just having the transporter get blown up, Nick can just die. Nick can just die. You can have a lapse of judgment for a couple seconds, and then all of a sudden, before you realize it, you really are starting over from the beginning of the checkpoint. We're going to, uh, the fun thing about this game as well is you can see the line you recently took. So, uh... Just put that down. It's been a while since I've been over on this side. Um, it's like that direction. I vaguely remember this line. To go around this this rock. Yep. And depending on where you're standing, you'll see your way marker. So we we try to go through roughly the way we came, so we can keep the way marker up and. I keep my uh, sight trained. Um, right. It's a very geographical game, folks. Yeah, it's super easy to get lost in the dust. I know I've said it like three or four times already, but it actually, it really is easy. And <laughs> you even play this you're game casually, on... you're gonna get super lost. They literally <laughs> give you items, like one of the first items you get is a flag. <laughs> a flag, so you're like, oh, there's the flag. All right, I know I'm, co I'm going the right way. I, I honestly don't think I've ever used that. If I'm being totally honest with you, I, I don't think I've ever used that once. I think I used but, it maybe once or twice. But even if you're playing on PC, uh, unfortunately there's no way to turn down the extremely oppressive uh, fog. Uh, unfortunately, no matter what, the, the fog will always be there. You will always be able to not see particularly well. So uh, it's really important to, to kind of get a really good feel for where everything is, like by memory. I'm going to give an exclamation of joy because we uh, found our way back here without too much fuss. That was actually a really good clutch because I would not have had the same decision making that you would have. I would have just returned to base. That And that would have honestly been probably maybe even faster i'm not sure but i didn't I really want like to that been Nick again. i think i think your way was better it's only because I, i've done the other category where you actually run over there with nick i'm like yeah right, you know right. what i'm just gonna take that transporter if this one broke down and thankfully you know we only have to come over to this area one more time so it doesn't really matter yeah, it doesn't even matter anyway at this point because now we are officially on to the next dig outside of our base. This is the Fallen Village. Uh, really heavy Resident Evil 4 vibes here, I feel like. Dude, that village, the village sequence in the start of Resident Evil 4 is a absolutely thrilling sequence, especially when he asks a question I ask myself a lot. Uh, where did everyone go? Bingo? <laughs> Uh, the, the new village trailer looks good too. Is it is it is it uh, taboo to talk about other games while we're speed running? Oh no, games? not at all. I mean, <laughs> no, uh, well, 
we we get to do whatever we want. I mean, within within some parameters, within, of course. Within reason. Within, within some reason. reason. Uh, but yeah, I'm looking forward to Resident Evil 8. Uh, I really like Resident Evil 7. I'm actually I'm considering going Resident as horror. Jack Baker for Halloween. I think I, I am could... too scared of first-person horror, so I will be watching that vicariously through you. <laughs> there we go. But this is pretty straightforward. Uh, it's kind of the same thing. Uh, it's not even kind of the same thing. It is the same thing. It's, it's a different he's map. He's going to go through. Yeah, it's the same thing, different map. And different Honestly, route. an easier map. This map is pretty easy because they have really long travel times. And it's just like small groups that spawn. So we can do a lot of fun stuff. Yeah, it's, it's just another... It's just another simple three waves. No, no major deal. Uh, I, th I think the blow-ups are over for the most part. So, at this point, we're just kind of farming experience points and just waiting for the clock to go by. <laughs> Me and the cat, we go way back. Going yeah, down these streets, holding it, holding it down with Ricky, man. Ricky's got my back. Actually, he's Rick, got my head. What am I Rick saying? Ricky's seen a lot now that I think about <laughs> He has it. seen a lot. He's like, back where you doing back there, man? That's not the route. <laughs> You're not supposed to go to that transporter. Shh, Ricky, hush. It's okay. You don't have Ricky to get world record every, every run. <laughs> I, I just, I can't imagine what it, it... Someone needs to create a mod where you can just, like, have a... Like, a cat POV in this game. Like, that, that's just, I, I feel like that would be interesting to just watch a replay from Ricky's perspective. Right there, uh, this little tip for all of you. If you dive, uh, when the explosion happens, you won't actually get the knockback stun. It's, uh, pretty useful. Um, if you want to keep on moving around and stuff. Yeah, when the explosion goes off, it causes a, a great degree of hit stun. Uh, uh, and it also, you know, because when you complete an objective and you want to return to base immediately, if you're stuck in that hit stun, your menu won't come up, so diving is actually optimal. Oh, fun thing about the countdown. So, if you listen to the male Japanese voice actor, he reads off 54321 really quickly, but the Japanese female voice actor she actually does it by the second, so good on the, this voice actor for actually reading it properly. I'm pretty sure that, that a lot of the voices in this game were for, at least in Japan, like a, a lot of the non-crucial character voices were just, I'm pretty sure they just like pulled someone out of the cubicles for them. Honestly, the voice acting in this game is pretty decent. Yeah, the, for the, for like the actual integral characters, because the captain is much more of a silent uh, silent protagonist, uh, not at all unlike Venom in the Phantom Pain. For all the actual characters with speaking roles, like fully blown speaking roles, uh, they they kind of pulled out all the stops. Uh, I believe uh, uh, Crispin Freeman is on the the American voice acting side, along with a bunch of uh, other notable famous American voice actors as well. So, I mean, they, they definitely didn't skimp in that regard. So we're gonna be coming up on about halfway through the second wave here. Plywood is just going ahead and doing some crowd control, making sure that nothing gets too crazy near the wormhole digger. And uh, it's, there's not too much to talk about during digs. That's the problem. It's, it's the same thing every time. I was just thinking that I honestly just should have thrown a grenade. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised that you used that much ammo. Yeah, well, I was like, I, I, I was, the whole thing Trying was I wanted engaged. to experiment, uh, with, with that, that defense to just completely avoid using explosives. Period. But honestly, once they all started surrounding the digger like that, I should have just uh, thrown a grenade because I cleared out enough of the crowd that I don't think that would have been an issue. I, really I think we're just, I think we're just numb from, uh, I, I think we're just numb from that teleporter is all, is that nothing seems crazy after seeing that. <laughs> That's right. One, one other disappointment with this game, you can't go first person bow mode, which, uh, I really wish you could. That would be really cool. That is kind of a bummer, is uh, iron sights are present on basically everything that's not a, 
you not bullety weapon. <laughs> That's right. You can't you go you can't go first person machete, which uh, uh, I I count that against the game. Uh, minus I 10 feel points. like the game would crash often. There we go. First person survival. Boom 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 boom. The 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 depth of like not not the depth of field I guess maybe that's not the what I'm looking for but um how they frame first person in Metal Gear games is really strange because the gun takes up like 70% of the screen. I remember when uh I think it was when MGS4 before it came out they were toting that um that you like you could play the entire game in first person if you really really wanted to and then the game came out and you you definitely really really can't We're staying so, watch. Yeah, at this point, there's not much else to do besides wait until wave three. When wave three, basically when a wave starts, the first minute is just dead air. Uh, so you, as you can see, the wanderers are starting to fall out from the teleporter and they take some time to file in. Wanderers are generally pretty predictable in their pathing as far as like the later in the game goes, especially like they tend to abide by the arrows and don't deviate very much. So it makes it really easy to group them in a way that makes things not get hilariously out of control. That's why the teleporter uh, defenses are so scary is because there's no set pathing. With the digs, there's set pathing. And I think that's the real difference between the two is that the wanderers can become so much more unpredictable when you're trying to defend a teleporter. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, one thing... We can give some tips, like, casually. A uh, really good strategy for this dig is don't worry about the enemies that are coming from buildings, because uh, any enemies that fall, they take fall damage. So you can use that to your advantage uh, and not have to do as much damage to them. Um, another great thing, and I'll demonstrate it right here, is the running punch is one of the best tools in this whole game. There's other melee attacks that you can unlock, but the running punch is super good. And if you have like a solo wanderer like right here, bam, crouch, get to his back, backstab him, dead. Very good technique, very consistent, um, and uh, doesn't use any ammo, so it's conservative. Yeah, and unfortunately, once again, this goes back to the thing that we mentioned earlier, where there's a lot of cool things in this game that you don't get to see in the NG Plus run, just because your character doesn't get to be developed enough to start using them. But this game actually has quite a fairly decently sized CQC system. So um, if you want to train in like hand to hand as part of like a skill tree, you can do that. So, but unfortunately right now, the I, I call it the mock punch that Plywood was doing. Is probably one of the only that's a great name and things that we can see <laughs> the box punch but if you have, intend to play through the game casually then you can do all kinds of cool CQC tricks that's true um, and flashlight effect is really weird looking if you're an FPV it just looks like this I forget there are even flashlights in it. <laughs> This game has so much gear. Like there, there's so much equipment and, and gadgets and weapons to play through with in this game. And honestly, like there are things that it, uh, I've played this game on and off since it's come out, and there are things that I still don't know about. So, like for example, I, I'm sure I knew flashlights were a thing, but I just remembered that they were a thing in this game. Why you would want to use one? Not really sure, but. Most areas aren't dark enough to justify it. There is like a day and night cycle in this game, so if it's nighttime, uh, visibility is even worse. <laughs> but it's never it's so bad, and like in a speedrun, you already know where you're going, so it doesn't really matter. Like, oh, it's a little bit darker, whoop de woo Yeah, it's not a big deal at all. There's, there's just options in this game that you don't really necessarily need. They're just cool to have. Now it's time to uh, upgrade just our sprinting speeds just so we can move a little bit faster in the next sequence. Yeah, we're just running behind a wall real quick to do some lunch time. You know, no major deal. Just 
being prepared because uh, we are about to do yet another run. Just a little bit, a little bit of running. So we can get our base set up for going to home. <laughs> or what we wish was home. Oops. But we were actually going to go to Africa. So the next thing that Plywood is going to do is what we talked about earlier. He's going to clear out the rest of the yard trash so that we can expand the base. This is why in the very first base dig, Plywood was running around blowing up this? Uh, various structures because they're in your way. The game will not allow you to expand the base until all of these structures are clear. So as you can see, this is pretty time consuming. And if you're proper about what it is that you're destroying, you can reduce a lot of time spent in the base builder. This little dialogue here is also slightly faster in Japanese. Which is great, because I, I love the Japanese voice acting, and it's faster. It's great. I don't have to listen to the annoying English computer voice acting. Uh, I will gladly listen to Heihachi Mishima any day of the week. Yeah. 100% on, on your side with that one. We're going to level up to level 15. Which we just barely cleared. That was way closer than I'd like. <laughs> um, Alright. Well, I was... think... um. I think that missing out on that teleporter kind of hurt because that's a lot yeah. of uh, yeah that, that, that's a lot of mobs that were probably you know carted off that weren't necessarily put into play. There's all this so, stuff I got. Nice. Oh yeah, you check your supply box now. <laughs> and uh, if you guys want to see some of these uh, cool accessories you can get, you can uh, uh, be the divine equine. A the horse the, head. the the bear with the stogie, which is uh I, I really like that one. Uh Pyramid Head from Silent Hill with the uh squishy flesh in the back. Uh the orange box. I love that they added the flesh. The flesh is great. A bandana. A Metal Gear Rex head. Eye patch. Metal Gear Ray head. And of course our friend Ricky. Uh, there's also some suits. I have a Raiden suit, but since we are not playing a male, I can't use that. There's also a. Do you have the the gray fox helmet? I do not have the gray fox helmet. But none of that matters because the only thing that matters is Ricky. Ricky is the best. So. Ricky is top tier. I used to run with the uh, pyramid head, and that's because uh, I've run uh, Silent Hill games in the past, so it's a bit of a callback. But uh, Ricky, Ricky. Ricky has a fan club. Speaking of cats, my cat is literally beating my door down right now. Uh, it, she's like, when is this run over? I know. I haven't been pet in, in one hour and 16 minutes. But uh, Plywood is now going to do the next base dig. This is very similar to the original base dig, only um, the enemies are quite a bit more aggressive now. Uh, the numbers are going to be quite more compared to the original base dig where it was only you know the occasional wave here and there so um not much to do here really uh defending anything that's not the wormhole digger is not really important um that's one thing an aspect of playing through the game casually is that when you're playing through the game casually you kind of want to make sure that wanderers don't get a hold of other parts of your base and destroy your stuff <laughs> Right, they can cause structural damage and cost you resources, and, and and it tends to hurt you in the long run. Here, the only thing we care about is the wormhole digger. Because All I care about is not... my digger and my food. All right. Yep, we're not we're not worried about anything else because it's the only thing that matters in this run. Also, this dig is oddly silent. The soundtrack in this game is actually pretty good. It's kind of weird, like <laughs> they. I have a pretty good soundtrack, but like this dig, which is pretty important story-wise, is just completely silent. Uh, for whatever reason. Yeah, it's this is actually a pivotal point in the story, and I, I won't dive into it too much for anybody that might be morbidly curious and doesn't have a great idea of what's going on. But this is, I'd say this is where, this is the halfway point of the game and things take a turn for the unusual. I can't believe they were trying to kill my locker. They're trying to destroy my locker. Can't be having that.
My lockers are for me and no one else. Yeah, um, story-wise, this game actually does link itself in a very unusual way uh, to the rest of the series. Um, well, initially, um, you're a person on Mother Base at the very end of Metal Gear Solid V Ground Zeroes, and Mother Base at the end of Ground Zeroes gets completely destroyed and wrecked by an uh, ambush party. But meanwhile, you get thrown into a wormhole and get transported to here. But later on, we learn some things that uh, are very surprising in terms of the rest of the Metal Gear series. So, very tantalizing. I actually find the story in this game to be fairly entertaining, if kind of goofy and B-movie-esque. If I recall correctly, this is still supposed to be intended to be canon, but it's alternate universe. Yeah, you could basically call this game canon um, if you because wanted it truly, to. Because like, it, it doesn't really hurt anything to call no, it canon. It, nope, it really doesn't. Um, aside from the feelings of, of fans. Um, as you can probably I, guess, both of us are I, kind I, of I, apologists I, for this game. This is a guilty pleasure <laughs> game for me. I, I kind of love rattling the cages on that, though, because people me get too. bent out of shape about this game. And I, I think that there's a certain part of people that deep down that they know that this game is not nearly as bad as it was made out to be. But, like, acknowledging that would be like them renouncing their loyalty towards the, the series. Where, by the way, this game is, I think it's $5 on Steam right now, so you should really go play it. Five bucks, this game is actually okay, <laughs> price-wise. I actually got this game for free, because uh, I agreed to run this game, and uh, one cool man was like, alright, I, I have a code, here you go. Uh, and then, And then, uh, <laughs> last week he's like, wow, you really did route this game, didn't you? I'm like, yeah. Uh, I really I like routing games. <laughs> he's like, you don't have to do this. You don't have to do this, Plywood. And then... Uh, next thing you know, I'm, uh, routing Metal Gear Survive and improving the route, which honestly is a lot of fun. I really think routing is one of the most fun things you can do. I cannot repair everything, because I have so little, um, oh, no. resources. You're, you're, yeah, you're still on Kuban. Uh, can you harvest all- uh, no, corpses disappear in- in digs. Yeah, I can't- I can't really do much- about that. Uh -oh. That's that's okay. It's okay. We'll, we'll you'll get you'll get we'll another opportunity. We'll make the dream work. I mean, yeah, I'm probably just gonna repair because it's not like this is not gonna record or anything. So. Yeah, it's it's alright. So uh, as you can see, still got some time to wait, and now the digger is finally finished. So we're souping up again. We're gonna run it one more again. And uh, we'll be proceeding to what I like to call the run. The, the ascension, the climb to greatness. We're going to go to the portal. we got to bring Chris along with us because uh, this is not uh, wheelchair accessible. So we're and gonna this bring is our Chris. attempt to return home. That, that is ultimately what this base dig was for, was to open the wormhole to return home. Yep. We're trying to return home and get the heck out of this uh, hell world. So this, this next does... segment here is a, kind of a bit of a would you you would call this a set piece, right? Oh yeah, definitely a set piece and yeah, a so... kind of a BS set piece because right up here <laughs> you're like, hurry! That was the time. Continue ahead, and if you continue ahead, you get grabbed and killed. <laughs> <laughs> yes, up here you have to stop for uh, the Lord of Dust's hand, otherwise he will one-shot you. If you touch that hand, you're done. So as you can see, Lord of Dust is a very large fellow. Um, you're not going to win a head-on fight with him, so at this moment in the game, our only option is to flee. So Plywood has to get to the top of Mother Base because that is where the wormhole is located, and that is our ticket home. As you can see, Lord of Dust is throwing giant boulders at you with as many appendages. And we're out of here. Boom. We're going nice. to go home. But we're actually not. We're, we're going to Africa, <laughs> folks. <laughs> you wish this run was over, baby. <laughs> but this run's not. just getting started. Oh, 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 we're just getting started. We actually have some very difficult chapters right ahead of us. Uh, the Ford Operating Base Memory Board 
and then we have to rescue the final POW, Seth. And both of these chapters are big turning points in this run. Because uh, we really There's a lot of mistakes to be up. made here. <laughs> yeah, a lot of mistakes that we want to avoid. So going forward into the Africa FOB, uh, since plywood's already loaded up and good on soups and stamina, uh, we're going to go ahead and head forward and we're going to go back into the dust. The dust also exists here in the forward operating base area. So there's a bunch of new monsters to deal with here that you've not seen before, uh, like the crawlers, for example. You can tell where they are because they look like a Bulbasaur planted in the ground. Um, one of the things that he's going to do coming out of the tunnel is shoot the crawler that's immediately right here. Otherwise, it's usually it supposed be... to take one shot, but maybe because of durability, I'm not sure the grabber didn't die in one hit. Weird. Yes, it's uh, it, sometimes it just does not die on the first go, unfortunately. But uh, it's important to get that grabber out of the way because if not, it becomes a real pain in your rear the multiple times that you have to go through that tunnel again. And this data board in particular is being held down by a bunch of grabbers that are hiding around the corner and uh, various wanderers that are wandering around and generally are looking to add more time to your run. So through a clever use of bait and a little bit of patience, you can slip in and get the memory board and be on your way. Unfortunately, if you're not particularly graceful, uh, for instance, me, sometimes you just casually add 35, 40 seconds to your run. Yeah, that, um, if you fail sneaking there after throwing the lure, which is quite easy to do since the crowds may not follow the bottle that you throw, um, you're gonna have to take out enemies and it just becomes a real pain in the butt, so. Right. So, since he's already handled the grabber that chills outside of the tunnel, he doesn't have to worry when he's going through for the second time. But this time we're going to go a different way, because we are after something totally different. We're after a person. And uh, go ahead and let him get through some pathfinding here. Um, there's a little bit of scaling that needs to be done, because we're going to go up high and then we're going to go low. And uh, a few things to watch out for here. Not too many wanderers, but at the same time, uh, they like to lay down and play dead in bushes, for example. Um, and coming on back on the way down, that's going to be kind of important to watch out for because you can land on a wanderer and they can grab you and it's super annoying and it wastes a bunch of your time. Yeah, we want to avoid grabbers as much as possible because getting grabbed is super slow, just in general. I went way around here because we want to avoid the huge crowds on the other side. I've always gone straight through. I'm so bad at this game. Your pathing was really interesting because I didn't even know about like that path you took. Um, it was an interesting strat, but I just wanted to avoid the grabbers. That 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 was the what I tunnel visioned the hardest on. Yeah, I go way around to avoid all that junk. That actually went super well. We didn't get any uh, slowdown. Really nice. Yeah, that was super good. So now that he's got Seth. He doesn't really have to worry about um, taking a very specific path. He just needs to be as direct as humanly possible. Uh, the only goal here at this point is to just make it to the next teleporter. So that's really all Dog. that matters. Um, okay. There are a couple new enemies that were around here. <laughs> oh, of course, the dog. Yeah. So, uh, the dog is one of the newer enemies. It's maybe not new, but um, one of the more recently present uh, but uh, regardless of that, he's gone ahead and activated the teleporter, so there's not much to do here. Uh, it's Of course, it's not going to be anything nearly as bad as the teleporter blow-up that we experienced earlier. That's uh, about as bad as it gets. Um, we're just kind of killing time, uh, making sure that, uh, you know, Seth doesn't get hurt and that the transporter doesn't get destroyed, which both of those things are pretty hard to screw up, but also nice injury. Um, get away from me! Oh no. Oh no. Uh, uh, it, are we are we having the meme run? No, we're fine. This transporter is going to make it through. Don't you worry. Uh, you're scaring me. I'm not going to lie. No, no, no. It's it's all planned. All right. All right. It's all part of the show. It's fine. But in any case, we're going to hold it down with Seth and we need to open up the Oh my god, it's so close. Uh, <laughs> just, just made no good, so nervous. 
you're gonna have a repeat having serious anxiety right now but anyway <laughs> everything's okay uh sets so into intact the transporter is intact we can go back to the fob so yep. this is the point of the game where the difficulty starts to go up a little noticeably like the closer you start to get towards the end of the game of course in tradition um the more intense the mobs start to become uh one of them that springs to mind immediately for me is the mortar i hate the mortar so much i don't like them uh, either the they are basically the they will stand back and just completely grenade you from so far away they do so oh, much so damage good. and they have a fully automatic weapon so if you get too close to them they'll actually just spray you so uh it, they they're really dangerous to be around if you don't take them out particularly quickly they're gonna come into play here as we go forward and uh the other one is is i can i can never remember their names i always call them jackals for some reason um, uh they're searchers i don't remember but i want to bring yeah. attention to the fact that i just did some badass parkour and did yeah not break I, my I saw that that was really really good yeah his pathfinding has been really good so far but we're, anyway we're gonna a, see these a, guys they're gonna like yeah, jump straight at us yeah you'll know them when you see them because they're they're like hunters they they leap through the sky they do like a ballerina spin kick and they're super annoying and super in your face so um, this walker gear path that Fly would have taken here, uh, you're going to basically encounter all of the enemies of the trade, um, more or less all the enemies that you're going to be seeing for the rest of the game. Uh, because at this point, the game doesn't really particularly let off. And normally, if you were playing through the game casually here, you would be unlocking a transporter that's very close by, and you would be fighting off all of these monsters that you are seeing right now because it basically trains the whole zone on you. So yeah. thankfully, so we're going to skip that. Because we don't we're need just this gonna, transporter. Yeah, <laughs> we're, yeah, gonna we're just going to skip all that. But it's a waste of time. <laughs> Very important that you grab the walker gear here, by the way. <laughs> They're called trackers. Trackers, thank you. Yes, I, I, I know because it jumped right in my face. Yeah, this, so as you can see, the trackers are going crazy and jumping on the hood of the walker gear. They have no chill whatsoever. No, nope, um, absolutely. You want to keep these guys away from no you. No chill. Um, so between the trackers and the mortars, you'll be uh, plywood will be having his hands full, um, not necessarily trying to stay alive, but trying to keep them from causing collateral damage to other aspects of the run. Um, but uh, at this point on, you kind of have to really be on your game and paying attention well, because any one of these particular mobs can give you a hard enough time that where it can completely screw up your plan. That's that's true, and. If you don't grab that walker gear, when I played this casually, I didn't pick up that walker gear, and running through that river was absolutely terrifying. Oh, when you it's get miserable. to Africa, you're just scared. It's so scary, because you actually it, get new enemies, and you're completely unfamiliar with the environment. They're all faster than you. They're all faster than you. <laughs> it's like, oh, jeez. So at this part of the point of the run, we are now checking out for some reason, Metal Gear Solanthropus is in this alternate universe. So sitting we have in this some ditch. important, <laughs> just just chilling. Yeah, at the end of this waterfall. Uh, so now we're interfacing with Solanthropus because we need a couple of things from it, and we are going to defend uh, the transporter next to Solanthropus because we'll be warping back here shortly for a future interaction with Sally. Just call him Sally for short. Why not? So anyway, these are the mortars that I was talking about. Thankfully, this part of the game is kind enough to let you fight. Oh no! Um, this game is kind of the game is kind enough to let you fight back with your own mortars at this point. But unfortunately, this is not the only place where you'll find mortars in the game. Like mortars, the enemy, not mortars, the weapon. Uh, but it is actually very easy to die here if you're not careful. Because you're only not only trying to get avoid getting blown up by mortars, you're also trying to avoid letting the wormhole teleporter get blown up by mortars. But as you can see, you can also actually kick mortar shells back. It's really cool. Kick it away! All right. Oh no! Oh, I'm so scared. <laughs> Bam! Nice field goal. Thank you. I'm proud. All right, let's let's take these guys out. They're they're really 
cramp yeah, of my this, style this, here. This this part stresses me out, and I've done it so many times already, and you've done it so much more than I have. It's so annoying. This defense, it's not that hard, but it's just annoying because these mortars can shoot you, and it's like, just stop hitting me. If they get into a certain rhythm where one mortar is shelling you and the other one is shooting at you, it's so hard to return fire. But thankfully, the wormhole transporter still has a good bit of health. I think we're going to be okay. Plywood isn't that worse off for wear, so I think everything will be all right. So that's another teleporter done and over with. We're going to go back to the FOV real quick, and then we are going to just return to this area. And listen to four notes of a winning 11-7 song. Uh, <laughs> so something that's pretty cool about this game is that there's a bunch of stuff you can find in the environment, uh, collectibles, and some of them are songs. And there are songs from all through Konami's catalogs. So there's Metal Gear music, Castlevania music, winning 11 soccer music, which is actually, those are bangers. Some Bimani music. Uh, which is cool because you like collect a bunch of tunes and Konami music is pretty good guys, pretty good. Yeah, because the, there's uh, um, some Akira Yamoka tracks on here too, aren't there? Yes, yes, you can unlock uh, the title theme for the original Silent Hill. So, um, we heard a few notes of that because there's a uh, radio tower uh, at the Ford operating base. We'll and see Plywood what has our uh, music already. <laughs> we'll see what our uh, music RNG is uh, coming up because after this defense, um, we will get to hear more than four four beats of a song. So that's cool. Uh, so yeah, this is a. <laughs> I've been avoiding the topic. This is a fifteen and a half minute defense. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm really <laughs> sorry. Um, so we'll, we'll go into like best practices when it comes to this defense. Um, I screwed this up the first time I did it casually, um, which is super annoying. Like, you get through it half of this and you die. It, it does not feel good to wipe on this. No, no it does not. Um, you may notice that I have the fences staggered, uh, and that's so I can run around. Uh, wanderers are pretty dumb. They'll just run into the, the fence rather than, you know, actually walk around it. So, using that, pretty good strat. Uh, yeah, the, so one thing about this game is that uh, when, you, when you place an object down, like a fence, in front of Wanderers, for example, the game will kind of, in a sense, like, even if the Wanderer is on the verge of basically being right on top of you, if you put the object down, it kind of like creates stop frames. Like the the enemy gets vacuumed into it, into a sense. So even if they're like super deep into your face, you can drop a fence and it'll like push them right back out. So wanderers are pretty dumb. Yep, and fences. Uh, <laughs> there's some memes when this game came out about like how overpowered just fences are, because you can fire through fences, you can shoot arrows through fences, and you can you use can a spear through, through a fence. Yeah, the spear and fence combo is uh, pretty clutch. Casually. Even even but if you're playing extreme uh, co-op, like, you will see fences used because they're just that good. And unfortunately, we go back to the thing that we've talked about before where, you know, if you're doing a NG plus any percent speed run of this game, you won't see a lot of the cooler things that this game has to offer, such as, well, I, I guess you could use them in this context, but uh, electric fences. Yeah, they're just kind of overkill. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're kind of overkill and uh, a bit resource intensive for what we're trying to do here. But you can do all kinds of cool things like um, like electrical fences are one of them. And then oil traps. Also, you, you can do put oil an oil traps. trap into an electric fence and they slide on the oil trap, which is really funny looking. And then they'll slide into an electric fence and get shocked. And then you or have the an air cannon, cannon yeah, that yeah, launches yeah. them backwards, and then they do the whole thing all over again. It's great. Like, the, what's fun about this game is watching the Wanderers die in all kinds of goofy ways. Oh gosh, there's a mortar. Oh no. Yeah, do not I, kill my goat. I, Leave my goat I, alone. As soon as I see the mortar come out, I make a beeline straight for them. I'm like, you have to die. 
You you can't. That's you can't be trusted. I'm sorry. So unfortunately, this is kind of one of those moments where, like, even though we're the we're the Metal Gear Survive Defense Force, this part of the game is pretty indefensible. Like, <laughs> it, it, it's there's nothing else to say besides that it's a mandatory 15 minute uh wave survival and there's no way to get around it you have to do it there's there's no skip or anything of the I sort unless you do the category that skips all digs it, it, for yes, our sanity <laughs> and, and unfortunately if you wipe during the middle of, of this of this defense you gotta start, you start all, all, all over, again. over again it's like old school gaming this game it's like oh you you, you died well there's no checkpoint so uh, it, it, enjoy this the game is not again. This, this game is not particularly gracious with giving you um, current era checkpoint runbacks. Uh, when, when you hit a checkpoint in this game, you're not going to see another checkpoint for a minute. Which, uh, if, you're, if you like that kind of game design, uh, this game does that, so there's that. Uh, it's definitely not very modern in that sense. It's very old school mentality, like, you screwed up, you're starting over. You can so. hold that. But like I, aside from that, doing? this is pretty straightforward. Uh, Pywood doesn't really have to do much besides keep people off the digger. Uh, it, do it doesn't really get more involved than that. Although, if you're not too careful, it can get pretty ignorant pretty quickly. Uh, because while you're mostly just seeing wanderers and bombers in these waves, every now and again, they'll throw in a mortar just to, to screw with you and to create problems. Sometimes they'll just throw in three mortars just because while you're not looking, generally speaking, um, because the spawn times are mostly the same, but sometimes they can be staggered a little bit depending on how quickly you're clearing things out. And uh, the last thing that you need while you're trying to make, you know, I don't know, a handful of wanderers get off of you while you're in a closed cramped space next to the uh, next to the digger is a mortar dropping in on you and shelling the crap out of you at the same time. Yeah, you want to be proactive with this defense as much as possible because not being proactive typically means you're going to be in a bit of a mess. So resource management is also a huge deal here. Because you have to remember that you don't have an option to go back to base. Once you run out of ammo in the middle of this defense wave, uh, that's it. Uh, that, that's why the arrows, once again, are so important, right? Because you can, as long as your arrows find their target, and you don't just whip the shot entirely, you can always pick them up and start over again. But you're going to see a lot of... Um, I, I'm not too particularly sure how much of a fan plywood is of it compared to me. But typically when I do this area, I try to kind of kite the bombers into the crowd so that way I can cut their legs out from under them and it helps me kind of save on ammunition because they end up exploding and then they take out the entire wave without Yeah, that's a that's a really good technique. Very but good technique. That's that's kind of a, a somewhat important element in resource conservation. Because there are a lot of enemies that you have to kill in this defense wave. And I'm going to tell you right now is that if if you don't bring your bow and arrow, uh, you're going to run out of ammo. You're definitely going to run out of ammo. I feel like you almost, in a, in a sense, you really have to have your bow here. Uh, otherwise, you'll just be holding on for dear life and, you know, trying to beat 800 people to death with your melee weapon. I am sorry to admit that uh, we have lost a goat, everyone. We oh, have no. one goat left. Oh, no. We, we lost we lost one of our goats. The run's over. Run, the run is over. Run away the from run the explosion! Is... I am a goat herder. I will, sp I will protect you, goat. I don't care about Sal or anything this. I care look, about these goats. Look at the routing. Look at look at that beautiful routing. That goat has no there. idea. That goat just has no idea right now. It has no idea that you're saving its life over and over and over. That goat looks like a Gary. Gary the goat. Gary the goat. Gary has no clue what is going like some some serious ish is going on right now and Gary is doing nothing to not be a part of it. Also good to know that this is this is Gary's home because this is fresh air and uh uh you're not gonna see animals wandering around the dust, so we just 
He lost his home. It's, it's very sad. We're trying to give it back. I'm, I'm trying. I'm, I really want to preserve this, but I'm going to uh, pay my respects. It's my headcanon that Gary is one of the last Patriots. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's a big negative that we lost. Uh, Let's go. It's one day we'll be forgiven. So six minutes left on the ticker, still kind of the same thing. Uh, the, 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 is protect the one goat that we have left, and uh, the waves aren't going to get that much more interesting. It's kind of more of the same thing. This is, uh, this is, this is uh, if I were a viewer, this is the part where I would get a sandwich while also keeping an eye on what's yeah, going on. Yeah, if you if you need to go take a quick bathroom break, folks, you know, get some stretch on, you know. Eat some breakfast, because I know uh, Europe is waking up, you know, this is a good time to do it. Uh, I am going to crash after this run, because it is very late in North America. It's 4.58 in the morning where I am currently. God, th these machine guns do no damage to mortars. Forget that noise, I'm just going to shotgun these fools. That is very satisfying yeah, when they explode. Give him the Seth treatment. Boom. Yeah, Seth that, will be... are, the, are you still using overpressure rounds there? I forgot to add them because uh, you know this this run's been going uh, swimming well. We're gonna we're gonna fix all that. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna all fix all that after this dig. Don't you worry. This run is going great. De uh, I forgot to mention that. Uh, uh, so after. Like trying to recover from tilt and trying to catch up to you uh, during the relay race last week. I once again forgot to level up before Seth, so I basically had to hold that too. Like, it's oh, just man. It, everything was just melting. Look at that goat. I'm not going to shoot at it, I'm just looking at it. You, you have your crosshair trained almost. I, I, too I'm, too just, I'm just saying, hey, everyone, look at this goat. I wouldn't shoot this goat. I don't want to shoot the goats. You know, they, they have binoculars in this game. You could have looked at the goat without I don't. I don't have that gadget. Uh, that's a big negative. Um, a, that's a negative. I, I rock and roll without the binocs. I, uh, can some enemies show up? I, I wouldn't mind shooting at them, frankly. Uh, getting a little bit, uh, looking at my watch. At least my goat's hanging out. Look at that goat. It really impresses me that not for five seconds has Gary ever even thought, hey, there are red holes opening in the sky. Maybe I should leave. Nah, let's notice him. Oh, now it's now he's gonna get up. He's like, eh, I don't know about this. Get out of here, mortar. Barely phased. We, we got bullets fly out. Oh, nope, there he goes. Yep, he's gone. Yep, he's, he's ready to move. He's doing the, the thing that, you know, when, when you're in a hallway and someone is coming in your direction and you're headed in their direction, you guys can't decide which side of the hallway you need to be on to not crash into each other. He's like doing that weave in between the wanderer pools. Sometimes the goats can start running into the groups and then I have to shoo them away because, once again, the goats are more important than this uh, thing we're securing. Also, you may be wondering, oh wait, Oh, you can't shoot them when they're falling. You can't do that in... I don't think you can do that in multiplayer. I guess you can do that in co-op, uh, or single player. I'm, I'm losing my words, folks. It's, it's late. Um, but we're right. almost I'm, there. I'm we're, here. I'm well, here. Thank you can you, man. on me. A 15-minute survival wave will, will definitely do that to you. It'll put you on the mix on notice. Uh, but we're almost through. We got about a little over two minutes left to go. And the rest of this is pretty textbook. Keep the wanderers away. Protect Gary. Is Gary still good? Gary's still good. We're Gary's okay. fine. We'll, we'll make quick this work guy just this. like. Oh, hello. How are you doing? Uh oh. Oh no. Oh no. That one's. Oh, no. oh he's done. <laughs> Dude, this this machine gun, I gotta say, is uh pretty good. Gary, get away from there. It's dangerous.
I really thought that he was gonna hang out and just catch the brunt of that. What a majestic symbol of hope and peace. The goat? Absolutely. Yes. Alright, here's a classic lure grenade combo. Grenades are fantastic because they ignore uh, levels. They just do flat damage and they'll just kill everything. It's like dropping a, uh, like a full screen bomb in a shooter game, side scrolling shooter game. And unfortunately the downside of it is that you don't get to have a whole bunch of them. Yeah, it's, that's why you want to have the uh, grenade satchels to expand your capacity. So we're getting down to about the end here. Not too yep, much longer. That's everyone. Go. They're all gone. Whoop de do. We did it. This sub is machine gun. What's, what's the see. status on Gary? Gary is going to live a, a long life, but without a partner, which is see, very I was gonna sad. Say, sorry, Gary. All your friends are dead, but you know. And he still has that so one here. bird flying around. Still has that bird. Where's that bird? I don't know. But there is a bird. And it flies around, and I can only assume that Gary and the bird will uh, develop a friendship. We hope. So that is the mandatory 15-minute wave survival. And, we did uh, it. That, I, I think that's the part of the run that no one looks forward to. I mean, I look forward to the goats. That's about it. All right, so there's some pretty important story stuff going on here. Uh, the plot is thickening. The juice is getting thicker as well. We're going to return to base camp. And uh, we learned some pretty devastating stuff that we can't discuss here. It's, 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 it's just too much. But um, we're going to fight a boss. But I need to prepare first because we are woefully unequipped for this <laughs> because of what happened earlier in this run. So here we go. I think we're listening to a Bumani track. So we're gonna level up first. Yeah, this part is pretty important. It's absolutely imperative that you hit level 20 before you go into this next segment because this is, um, think of this as kind of like a, um, a gear check, except in the context of it's a level check. Uh, otherwise, this boss fight is going to take a very long time. One thing that Plywood is going to do is he's going to switch to overpressure rounds for his shotgun uh, because they're going to do quite a bit more damage and we're, we're basically we're looking to try and two, three shot this boss. It should take only about three shots at most. So we're taking a boss fight that typically takes about 15 minutes or so, give or take, somewhere around there, and we're going to turn it into about 30 seconds. Yep, but not before I grab my grilled wild ass from my resources because... I just want to make sure I'm fully prepared with my asses. Alright, so, uh, Seth. Uh, strategy is very simple. Uh, we get the best shotgun we can find. Uh, we go to his back and we just load onto him. <laughs> it's, it's that simple, folks. Uh, he is transformed and we gotta, we gotta stop this menace. Jump right into it. It'll be a one, two, three affair. <laughs> oh, there are four shots. All right, that's not so bad. Four shots is fine. I know that's not your your ideal, but four shots is still okay. That's pretty good. No, that was a pretty fast fight. Um. <laughs> anyway, that's Seth. That's Seth. He's gone. Goodbye, Seth. Um. What that is, is actually, aside from the Lord of Dust, that is significant. That's legitimately the only significant boss fight in the entire game. Every, all the other bosses are post game, which is a real disappointment as a Metal Gear fan. That there's not that many bosses in this game. They have the one boss, which is cool casually because you're like fighting your base, but like in the, in the speed run, it's just like, oh, well, uh, he's. He's dead now, um, and we are now moving on to uh, yeah, Ruins 3. It, it, <laughs> uh, it, it, the the speedrun of this game is really, really good at uh, um, obscuring spoilers. 
So we we're gonna do some awesome parkour. This uh, route for climbing this cliff has gone through multiple revisions, uh, and we're gonna be using an iron watchtower here to climb over the rocks here, which is uh, pretty cool. This is this is the uh, this is peak Skyrim action right here. Uh, we're plywood is basically going to turn into a goat. And ah! Okay, we got vertically. it. I got stuck for a moment there. Oh, I thought oh, we were. Oh no! Oh, that's so scary. I thought we were ascending to a higher plane of existence, but I think we're fine. We're fine. And very important, we don't get grabbed by the ghoulies here. This is actually a new line I've come up with that avoids grabbers entirely, which uh, I like because grabbers suck. So. At this point, we are working on getting the final memory board that we will need uh, before we start to arrive at the conclusion of the game. And this is done by heading into the final ruins area. And as you can see, you know this has been mapped out really thoroughly. Uh, it's it, you can basically only really go one way to keep a really really good time. But um, Pilot has already used one iron tower before. He's going to be using a second one coming up here shortly. Yep, and that's going to skip a significant portion of these ruins, and if you've played Phantom Pain, you'll recognize this mansion area. This is where you meet Code Tarker at Code Talker. I'm having trouble talking. Code Tarker. We're going to drop, drop a tower here, climb it like so, booty boom boom boom, and that skips a nice chunk of the ruins. It's nice to have yeah, iron because watch instead towers. of going in from the basement, you skip about three stories worth of uh, enemies and just kind of go in through the side door and just slip in unnoticed and just more or less just walk in, pick up the board and leave. That's it. Oh, we have a caution. Hey, there we go. Oh, good. All right, so that is the last memory board. Now we're going to re return to base camp. This will be... Uh, not just the last time that we'll be in the FOB, but we're getting to be about that point. So, what Plywood is going to do next is do, you guessed it, it's everyone's favorite chat room. Plywood is going to do Do you, do you know what we're going to do? Chat, what, what are we going to do? Think about it for a moment. What are we, what are we going to do right now? One more dig, baby. One more dig. One, one last dig. One last job before we uh, close it out. Please don't hit me, dog. The run part of this is just getting there. Uh, we're gonna do some cheeky little movement here to uh, avoid climbing. Uh, obviously, we want to avoid any sort of movement that causes us to have to, uh, like, take a step down or stop our forward momentum. So, uh, good planning here with your lines. You'll avoid that and uh, avoid having to, like, press spacebar to actually climb up. So this is the uh, mines. It's actually what I would consider the hardest co-op map in multiplayer. Yeah, um, mines is pretty. Mines is pretty toxic. I agree. Don't get grabbed by that ghoulie in the water. It's because you're defending the bottom of a hill, which is not a great defense point. Admittedly, and. The run part of this stage is complete. Now we are going to defend and enjoy another auto scroller with all of you folks. Um, the end of this run is super chill. There's only one last part where I actually have to do anything uh, quote unquote run related. Because... As long as you're not me and you know come up short on resources. Well, we're, we're working on that. I will. I will make a resource queen out of you. Um, that was that was unfortunate. That was so unfortunate. Um, yeah, one of the reasons why running New Game Plus is preferable to New Game is really really comes down to the issues involving resources because you have to build a trap for the Lord of Dust at the end of the game. The problem is the trap you have to build uses a lot of resources you wouldn't typically find in the field. So if you're doing a new game run, you have to find all these resources 
and when it was routed originally, I, I don't know if this is necessarily true, maybe there's some resources that Cool Man couldn't find, but I, one Cool Man who originally routed this game along with William K, uh, they couldn't find uh, enough concrete. So then you would have to deal with RNG opening up uh, crates, which we have never really done in this uh, speedrun since we don't need resources, uh, to get enough concrete to build the trap. Right, so, and multiplayer, multiplayer farming tends to mitigate a lot of resource concerns. Oh, Sandbone Trio. We got Guitaru, Guitar Man fans in the crowd. Love that game. I've actually run that game. It. Very good game. So at this point, plywood is basically just passing time. There's not really... The, this wave defense isn't particularly hard. Um, I, again, the, the game is only as scary as it is, like, at the blow-up teleporter. Uh, in terms of the speedrun, this game is only truly scary there. Yeah, we got some explosive barrels that we can use to take out groups if we want to. I can basically go to town on all these enemies. As long as I don't just start wasting bullets, uh, we can pretty much do whatever we want. Um, so chat, if you got questions about uh, running this game, or just running Metal Gear games in general, because we have a, a whole community of people uh, that run these games, not just survive. Survive is a, a special flower. <laughs> um, I think it's like that flower in the Simpsons. You know that flower in the Simpsons that like opens every 200 years and then it opens up and it smells like rotting trash? <laughs> that's, that's like survive, you know? Um, especially because since this is an always online game, there's a very real possibility that at some point, Konami's gonna shut down the servers and you won't be able to play this game anymore. Which, um, from a preservation perspective, um, a game history perspective, I think is really sad. Um, even if you don't like this game, its concept or whatever, um, it's a shame when games just disappear and you can never play them again. Yeah, it's definitely a really huge bummer, and Konami is kind of notorious for um, looking at games as a service. So hopefully it never comes to that, but I would not be surprised in the event that it actually happens. Yeah, and honestly, like, this game doesn't really need to be always online, frankly. Like, maybe it helps in certain respects, but, like, the logic in this game and the things you do honestly could all be offline, aside from the multiplayer, of course. That has to be online, but... Anyways, it's it's a it's a sad thing to think about because there's been a lot of games over the years that uh, were always online and then taken off and then you know whatever exists footage-wise, archive-wise is what exists unless uh, people go ahead and try to preserve it and uh, you may not know it but this game did not sell very well um, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> it's doubtful to say it's doubtful there's going to be a lot of a much of a preservation effort for this game outside of whatever Konami decides to do. Oh, I don't want to leave, no, it. I, I, I wanna leave it, this it, area. I, I want to go ahead and venture to say that I feel like at some point or another somebody will somebody will do something because someone did something for MGO one and MGO two. So and I I would see, be but, those, to argue. But, but those modes had uh, actual fan bases. That's the problem. Yes, fan bases. I'm making the air quotes gesture right now but yeah like i i feel like where there's a will there's a way you know nothing's truly dead until it's truly dead yeah i don't want to be overly cynical about it and uh regardless of what happens to this game uh i've enjoyed playing it and sharing it with other people and routing it um you know preserving uh what was done to make this game optimal in the speed run like it's cool um so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little bit of plugging here since we got some time. If uh, anyone's interested in learning any Metal Gear speedruns, uh, you can check out our website at uh, MetalGearSpeedrunners.com. We got 
a whole bunch of resources, guides, tutorials. Uh, you can find a link to our Discord there. Um, whether you want to run the original Metal Gear on MSX, uh, Metal Gear Solid 1 on PlayStation, or uh, this game. If, if you actually want to run this game, please let us know. There's actually a lot of resources available for this game and a lot of uh, really thoughtful, uh, lots of time invested, like detailed guides that you can check out that are really helpful for learning how to run this game. There's some things I do need to update since we've uh, updated the route a little bit since um, some of that information has been created and of course uh, I need to edit that page for uh, Nicholas. <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, I was so... Like, it should be like big red font and like size <laughs> yeah. 72 that says, don't do this here if you enjoy making it through this run. Exactly. Um, I was very thankful that, uh, No Good Citizen came along and wanted to run this game because, uh, after I got a few records and some ILs, individual level runs done in this game back in 2018. Uh, at the very end of the year, I finished up. I was like, after uh, the end of 2018, so 2019, I was finishing it up at the last part of December. I was like, I'm going to uninstall this game. I'm done. Because it's just, no one wanted to compete. You know, there was not really any other life. I gave the game as much life as I wanted to. So when you came along, it was like, nice. I actually feel like returning to this game. Uh, it was honestly a big surprise that uh, I was running this for a big bad gameathon. I thought this game was too big and too bad, but clearly, <laughs> clearly that's just not the case. This game is big and bad enough. So I really want to thank everyone for watching as we uh, do this last defense. Yeah, you guys have been awesome. Thanks very much. It's, and we we do truly mean it when we say. This game is not that bad. The, the 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 negative hype surrounding this game is a little bit overblown, and if you can get it for cheap, it's it's more than fun for you know a couple bucks. I would agree. I think there's a, there there are worse games in the Metal Gear series, and I have nearly played every game in the series as much as of a qualification that is being a video game nerd uh, and a speedrun nerd. Um, though that's kind of like a, it's kind of like saying ATM machine, honestly. Um, there's a few games in the series that I think are worse than this one, uh, but it's definitely on the low tier. <laughs> Portable Ops. Uh, Snake's Revenge on the NES, for instance. That is definitely a big bad gameathon contender. Um, so, don't pause, don't pause game. I don't like that. Sometimes that happens. Like you open the menu yeah, and it just mine like mine does that. Mine does weird. that too. It's weird. Mine does that too. It's terrible. What, what, what are we saying? No game. Good. Buy a game. Don't don't ask questions. Just consume product. All right. Yeah. There All you right. go. If this, uh, sometimes I have gotten questions in my chat when I stream this game. Like plywood. Why do you keep doing this to us? Plywood. Aren't there other things you could do with your time? We want you. We want to watch something else. And then I say no, 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 no. I'm going to get the world record. You can't stop me. Um, but the other thing people sometimes ask me is, should I play this game? Uh, is it any good? And then I say, if you're actually interested in this game, give it a try. You may want to have some guides on hand because the very start of this game can be pretty terrible in terms of... <laughs> it can be a real turnoff because you're starving, you're thirsty, all you have is dirty water that makes you sick with cholera. You start vomiting. Uh, you get you go into the dust. You start choking. Uh, you get lost. You get confused. Uh, you're eating rodents, hiding in buildings. It's it's not a great exi existence. But eventually, eventually you create your empire, your survive empire in DSA. It takes some time. My there. first experience with this game was uh, the, the was literally dying of starvation and thirst, trying to find a single crumb of food in the desert, and losing like 45 minutes of progress. Before I didn't find anything. 
Ooh, Metal Gear Acid. I have actually run Metal Gear Acid 2. Uh, I honestly think Acid 1 is a not a great game, but Acid because Acid 2 improves on Acid 1 in so many ways. Uh, it's such a better game on a lot of levels. Um, Acid 1 feels like a tech demo. I mean, it is a launch title, so you have to give it a little bit of slack, but it really feels like a launch title, and thankfully it's sold well enough that they could make a game that is just better, period, like on every level, visually, musically, gameplay-wise, user interface-wise. There's still some issues with the game, um, but it's such a clear improvement over... Uh, the original game. Yes, Metal Gear Acid's the the card game on uh, PSP. There's, there's definitely worse Metal Gear games than you can play than this one. For all intents and purposes, despite everything you know that the journalism outlets may have said about this game, it's still a complete title. It's like it legitimately is a complete title. I don't even think they asked for full retail in this game. No, no, right? They they didn't ask for full retail price. They were just like, game. here's a here's a spinoff, forty dollars, take it or leave it. We hope you enjoy it. Here's a tracker. Hey, my favorite. So, I believe this is uh, this is the final wave. Uh, That's right. And once once this is done, we are basically home free. No more digs. I know yep. you guys are going to be really sad to see survive go, but uh, we're going we home. Too much longer for this world. We're going home. We're supposed to save you know the world. Um, we're not. But doing honestly, that. look, I'm just out here for myself. I want to get the the hell out of Dite. So uh, we're we're gonna do that. Um, gonna say sayonara to our teammates we didn't really care about them to begin with we just wanted to rescue them because we had to not because we particularly wanted to i just yeah, want to get out of obligations here. are more like suggestions that's right so um you're supposed to defeat the lord of dust but that's another like 20 minute defense and i don't got time for that folks i need to go to bed yep it is almost 5 30 in the morning and uh it, it will be about time for us to make tracks and save a bunch of frames by just taking the bad ending so, so what's what's going to happen <laughs> next is that plywood is going to leave the fob and return to afghanistan to the original base camp and he's going to build the archaea blade trap the weapon that is intended to seize control of the Lord of Dust and hold it in place for the final kill shot, which we're not going to do. Nope. Instead, we're going to build the blade trap and be like, yeah, guys, you know, we're going to do it. We're going to do this Shru together. <laughs> Shrug All our shoulders and just walk away. And like, yeah, well, because we're, we're going to be going to the top of Mother Base because we're letting Chris uh, go into the wormhole without us. Uh, he's going to live on because he's a child and you know we don't we, no one's really sure if we're going to be able to get back so uh if anyone should go back it's the kid not the adults um save the child save the child and that's actually very important story wise that we save the child not us but we're also going to save ourselves and time will be coming up here shortly and time and that's the bad ending we're just going to Take GG's. the same portal that we let Chris go in. Uh, Ricky's gonna come with us, of course. We're gonna save Ricky. Uh, save the cat. Uh, but the world, eh, who needs it? And that, folks, is Metal Gear Survive. 212.09, world record is 208.59. That, that was all in that teleporter. <laughs> yeah, that teleporter that was. was a disaster, but not as that much was... of a disaster as it could have been, frankly. It's unfortunate, but it happens. It happens, it happens. I was hoping to get a world record in this the marathon run, but marathon runs are marathon runs, so what are you going to do? But uh, even so, I really do appreciate everyone who uh, stuck around and watched this run, and of course I want to thank you, No Good Citizen, for helping commentate uh, for course, this run. Of course, it was my pleasure. Yeah, it was a ton of fun. Um, if anyone is interested in watching me run, not just this game, okay, because eventually I'm going to walk away from this game, uh, for other pastures, but, uh, if you're interested in watching me run Metal Gear games and other games, uh, you can find me at twitch.tv forward slash 
plywood underscore and uh no good citizen over here is also running this game and plays street fighter on his channel as well yep if you want to check me out i'm easily found basically universally everywhere as for example twitch.tv slash no good citizen i am no good citizen on everything so if you look up no good citizen on twitter i am there if you look up no good citizen on instagram i am there I I own all the no good citizen property property. You are the no good citizen. I am the one and only. So if you want to check me out, I run this game as well. I'm also a member of the fighting game community. I play a lot of fighting games, mostly Street Fighter. Um, so yeah, you can check me out on Twitch and Twitter. That's usually where I am the most often. Yeah, Ricky Ricky dished us, but Ricky Ricky went to a better place than we're, we're stuck in the desert. Uh, back in Phantom Pain, one of the wandering, uh, wandering lost soldiers that, uh, Big Boss has to rescue, but, you know, the world's fine. The wor world's just gonna be A-OK. -okay. It's, okay. it's, it's just that alternate universe that's messed up. Of course. So yeah, folks, uh, that is Metal Gear Survive. Uh, I am glad that I got to share this game with all of you, and, uh, I hope... You people stick around for what's coming down the pipe for Big Bad Gameathon. Uh, next up, we have School Jagger, Revolts of the Westicans. No, and also Guido's Lost and Plantinus. I don't know these games, but they sound incredible. So you should definitely check them out. Um, that's going to be it for me. I'm going to turn it back over to the host. Thank you all so much for watching. See you, everybody. Thank you.